Hi, welcome back to my channel. I know I've had quite the hiatus, but I have quite a bit more time in my schedule to make videos now, and I plan to take advantage of that. I thought I'd get back into all this with a little work in my new sketchbook while I answer some questions from my followers on Instagram. I'm currently working in the Strathmore 300 series sketchbook, and if anyone's interested in a review of this sketchbook, let me know. Since I'm going to be answering questions here, feel free to mute the video and put your own music on if you prefer the art process without the narration. Today's subject is insects, so fair warning, if you're not into these little guys, I'd suggest a different video of mine, but if you want to give some metallic little bugs a chance, feel free to stick around. The first question I received was asking what type of assignments I'm given by my teachers as an art major and what my workload's like. Now, I took the first year of schooling for art at a community college, so I'm not going to say my experience is like every art major's. I'm still working on earning my bachelor's, and my original plan was to take my first two years at Monco to try to save some money on the first two years of art school before putting my money towards a more specifically art-based school. What I'll say from being at Monco, though, is that many of my assignments were not instruction-based in terms of learning techniques, but rather a semester full of project after project, where you're given a basic set of criteria needed in the piece you're making and what medium it needs to be done in. I would compare it to when you had those projects explaining a concept in your high school, where you had to make some sort of model that displayed the information you were supposed to have learned. You get a rubric with the stuff you need on the display part of your project, you need to meet all of it to get full credit, and it has to be original. One of the biggest things, especially in the formative years for an art major, is studying from life. We'd have part of one of my classes set aside for drawing from a model, part of it critiquing our last projects as a class, getting them graded by the end of it, and then talking about the next assignment that'll be due in a few days. It was pretty hectic with my first two semesters in terms of trying to fit in the time to work on the assignments along with all my other classes. I was taking English and math, as well as the first of three courses of art history required for my major, on top of two to three studio-based art classes, but I got more of the lesson learning and testing in English and math, whereas I was pretty much given an online textbook to work with to learn any techniques I was supposed to use on a project on my own, and then create the project using that technique, then bring it in for critique in about three to five days. Balancing that on top of working on papers for English and the ungodly hell that is college level math was stressful to say in the least, but if I could manage it in high school and make it a graduating, I told myself that I could do so in college. My biggest stressor had to be that art classes pretty much had no instruction from the teacher in terms of learning the technique. The expectation is instead that you teach yourself how to work with a new medium or use a certain art principle completely on your own and do so successfully so that it's an aesthetically pleasing piece that also contains the required techniques. Trying to pick up something completely new with basically no physical instruction then being critiqued on something you had to teach yourself and work with in five days on top of your non-art related classes, that can be a challenge. Again, I can't say everyone goes through this sort of instruction at art school, but that's pretty much how all my classes were run. So if you're seeking out art classes at community college and want more physical instruction on learning something, I'd seek it outside of my school. If you're looking into going to art school though, I absolutely recommend asking those at the college how the classes are run. Because if you don't like the way that they're teaching you, the school just might not work the best for you in terms of learning your craft. The next question was, how do I continue to find inspiration? So there's a lot of different ways that you can find new sources of inspiration. An easy one would be going to art museums, but that's typically not my thing. I personally like following artists on social media and looking for interesting references on Pinterest for people to draw, interesting buildings, color palettes, etc. For what I'm working on here, for example, I saved a lot of photos of bugs I found on Pinterest to a board and looked back at them when painting them to either try to get the colors right or completely change the palette to be a bit more aesthetically pleasing next to the other bugs. I always thought insects were pretty neat, but I can't say I'm a fan of them crawling on me, so I suppose I'd say I prefer admiring them from a distance. I also have a pet garden snail and was originally planning on doing a little painting of them in a garden, but I thought a more colorful spread would look nicer on the first page of a new sketchbook. Now a few of my followers asked a bit of the same questions here, specifically regarding artist block and burnout. How often do I experience burnout and just constantly making art seem tiring to me? Now don't get me wrong. I think every artist experiences art block and burnout at some point in their career, sometimes more than others, and especially if you're a part-time or full-time freelance artist trying to come up with something original all the time. I just can't say I get burnt out from art too much. Art block? Definitely. But if I don't feel like doing art, it's mostly because I'm burned out from working on a bunch of non-art-based things. As I've expressed in some previous videos, I'm autistic and ADHD. Art is both my passion and a serious hyperfixation, so I'm pretty bummed when I can't go doing it all the time. 
On the days I can't work on it quite as much as I want to, or I don't know what to make next after spending so much time away from making art, I refer back to my 50 million little Pinterest boards that I made and look for something that sparks my interest. Well, then, how do I deal with art block? Again, I refer to my Pinterest boards here. They're my life support when I don't know what to do art-wise. Saving things that interest you, and most importantly, categorizing them, like going, okay, this is a section for people that look fun to draw, or here's some good photos of landscapes to paint. It's really easy to set aside sources of inspiration when you can't just go somewhere and look for something you can make art from. If you can, though, I highly suggest studying even the most mundane things, from the clutter on your counter or coffee table that becomes a fun new little still life, to how your house looks when you're seeing it from across the street. Art is everywhere, you just have to look for it sometimes. How do you handle art block when you still have projects to do? I find especially if you're in the starting stages of working on your art project, or three simultaneous art projects in my case, thumbnail sketches can be a little daunting if you don't even know how you want your piece to look. I find that starting off with something silly and less specifically adhered to what your project is, is an easy way to find your solution, than continuing that by making little sketches until you're back in business with thinking of concepts. That might sound easier said than done, but I swear by it in terms of getting all my projects done, even when I insist to myself that I have no idea how to get this project done. Another one would be that if you have a specific subject you're supposed to be studying, looking for references of that and doing just quick, very simple studies of it can quickly lead you to starting to come up with your own concepts. Another set of followers had similar questions regarding mediums. What's my favorite medium? What's my least favorite? So I'll start with my least favorite. Charcoal. Definitely charcoal. It's messy. It's so messy. I've literally blown my nose before and found that I've inhaled charcoal. And that's my PSA to wear a mask while working with it for a while if you don't want that happening to you, okay? Chalk and oil pastels are only slightly higher than charcoal in my opinion for similar reasons. I just can't stand anything that chalky and messy. Getting my hands dirty with paint or something, I'm fine with. Marker, stains, all good. But the texture, the feeling of it on my hands, it's like no matter where I work and how I use it, if I put gloves on so it doesn't get all over my hands and under my nails, wear a mask so I'm not literally sneezing out charcoal later, it doesn't matter. It'll find a way to get absolutely everywhere, and also for me to somehow smear it a little too dark in one spot and never completely lift it back up. It's just very frustrating for me, and I need a medium that's not going to be one big roadblock to just naturally creating and getting my ideas out. It's like glitter, but less festive. Also, it's just not my style personally, as a medium. If you like pastel and charcoal, good for you. I don't know why or how, but good for you. Favorite medium. Okay, I don't know if I'd say I have one sole favorite. I've currently really enjoyed working with watercolors, gel pens, acrylic paint markers, and colored pencils have always been a material to sketch with in my case, but lately I've been working in a more mixed media sense. If I'm using watercolor, I'm typically not just using watercolor. It's likely over some cold erase pencil or pen line art, and then pens, markers, colored pencils. I'm either using just to regularly sketch or add detail work on top of the watercolor and line art. For anyone wondering what kind of watercolors I'm using, I'm planning on making a video about all the colors I use in my palette, but the metallic paints in particular are actually a couple of handmade watercolors I got from two different paint makers on Etsy, The Art Spirits and Sheep and Sundry. I'll put links to both shops in the description below for anyone interested. I'm mostly using the color Mercury from Sheep and Sundry and rusty gold from the art spirits to mix new metallic colors with the rest of my watercolors. I'd like to give a special thanks to my friend Fanny, by the way, who left a plethora of questions, so I decided to save hers for last. First one is, who influences your art? Now, again, I don't really go to art museums to seek out inspiration, so I'm not really gonna go say, like, Monet or something. I think the biggest influence I've had out of famous gallery type artists is Kehinde Wiley. Please look his work up. You might know him for the portrait of former President Barack Obama. I really love his style with portraiture, especially the bright use of color, and the not quite hyper-realism, but definitely the realistic capturing of the subject's features. Most of my biggest influences in terms of other artists were art YouTubers I watched growing up in the 2010s. Now, I'm going to list all their channels and Instagrams below if you want to check them out. I'm going to try to narrow it down to like 
the top four that I watched when I became officially convinced that I wanted to be an artist and wouldn't really be truly happy doing anything else in life. The first one is Victoria Goodvies. Previously known as Juicy Inc. on YouTube and her new channel is just titled with her full name, please check her out. I've learned more art techniques from just watching her videos than I have from every other art class that I've ever taken combined, including college. I'm really not exaggerating there. <laughs> her videos are really calming and her art is just amazing, and you'll probably learn a thing or two from her if you watch her review videos or her sketchbook habit series. I was absolutely crushed to see that her old videos on her Juicy Ink channel are now all unlisted, so sadly I can't tell you to go see all the videos I watched growing up, but definitely check out her new channel. She's amazing. Okay, fanboying aside, my other favorite growing up would have been Iwa Choi, also known as Pear Floor. She makes these like practically cinematic grade, aesthetically pleasing studio vlogs and painting videos, so please check her videos out. Another one would be Jacqueline de Leon. She does a lot of really beautiful portraits and murals of ladies. Honestly, she's why I have fountain brush pens and watercolors now. The final one would have to be Sarah Tepez. She makes a lot of videos giving tips to artists while she works, and if you're more interested in digital art, I highly suggest her work. Please check them all out. Uh, this is not sponsored by any of these ladies, by the way. They just, you know, inspired me to pursue the career that I have today. So, nothing big. Is there something you want to improve on in 2024? Okay, so I'm not gonna answer this one too much here because I'm actually working on a video where I'll be discussing my art goals this year. So stay tuned to that if you're interested. But the biggest thing this year is really making my art more professionally, like taking commissions, setting up an online shop, and well, sadly, finishing a sketchbook. <laughs> I'm a chronic quitter when it comes to finishing sketchbooks, in part because I am still such a perfectionist, but I'm working on it. And when I make a bunch of quote-unquote bad art, I want to just erase the evidence by stopping completely and starting a new sketchbook altogether, then using said misfit sketchbook as a book for, like, swatching art materials. I really want to stop doing that and quit being such a perfectionist, because it takes away from the joy that art brings me. So working on the bugs here, for example, is my attempt to get a head start on accomplishing that goal. For anyone wondering what I'm trying to get into the tiny nooks and crannies of an insect with a flat brush for, I'm actually not a fan of using the water brush I'm using here, and I somehow misplaced all my other brushes in the process of reorganizing my desk. The flat brush is a part of the Creative Inspiration series by a company called Creative Mark, and I'm going to leave a link to where you can get them below because they're honestly my favorite synthetic brushes, and I definitely recommend them for beginner and professional artists. What's your favorite thing to draw? Ooh, okay. So, if you follow me on Instagram, it might be a little obvious that I love making portraits of people. Lately, I've been really into drawing these bugs, though. No, seriously. Uh, there will be other pages containing bugs. I just think they're neat. Do I want them crawling on me? No. Are they pretty and kind of pointy and scary, but like in a beautiful way? Yeah. Again, admiring them from a distance, people. We can do that now with the wonders of the internet and the smartphone. Next question is if I ever get overwhelmed on a subject or model and what I would do to overcome it. Alright, especially when working on drawing people, you can't always get it right the first time. I find that if I really like someone's features and I really want to draw them right, but I'm not getting them quite right the first time around, I literally just try again. I know, again, that's easier said than done, and sometimes the subject just isn't going to look great the first time, the fifth time, the fifteenth time. Definitely experienced that with drawing members of BTS in middle school. But I find that sometimes, even if it seemed like I just couldn't get it right the first 50 times the day before, if I start fresh the next day, or try another picture of the model, perhaps at another angle, I might just magically get it right once I clear my head. And sometimes it's just never gonna work, and it's so frustrating. Especially if you want to get a certain K-pop idol's ear down, and you're just certain it's not supposed to be captured from pencil to paper by man, and physically impossible, but you know what? I have a photo somewhere where I did, in fact, get Kim Taehyung's ear right, and it's taped to my wall for everyone to not remotely care about when they see it above my desk, but I look at it and know to be proud of the seemingly five years it took me to get that man's ear right. Okay, the final question I received is how long does it take for me to finish a piece? This really depends. If I'm working on something in my sketchbook or my iPad sketches that I like to post on Instagram, that's typically no more than half an hour to an hour. Now, something with color? If you can't tell, I had to adjust the speed of my painting process for the bugs here. It takes a little more than 20 minutes to paint all these. Depending on my schedule, it can take a few hours to a few days. 
but it really just depends mostly on how much time I actually have to spend working just on one piece, or if I'm bouncing between running errands and all my other fun semi-adult themed tasks that I have to do now that I'm officially a 20 year old. Alright, that should be all my questions for this video. The bugs were a lot of fun to make, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching me work on them, or made some art of your own while I talked. A lot. For a while. I really love answering questions about art, so if y'all have any more, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Now all the supplies I used today as well as the music in the background are in the description, but if you have any questions about anything I did or used today, feel free to ask them in the comments. I'm also happy to report that I've started taking commissions, so check the link down below if you're interested. I also want to take this time that I've got left to say that my comment section both in all my YouTube videos and pretty much all my art-based Instagram posts are free spaces to promote yourself, pretty much like an unofficial little artist support post. If you're an artist, feel free to introduce yourself in the comments, say what type of art you do, what medium, your socials, what have you. I think it's really important that artists support one another, and you never know, you could find a channel that you really love by a really underrated artist. I hope everyone has a good day, and thanks for watching. Bye!